Hi, it's Tom here, and today we are going to be looking at 132 motors. So, uh, as you can see, there is a wide selection of these that have become available in the last uh, six to eight months, and um, there is a bit of a motor revolution going on at the moment, in case you hadn't noticed. So, obviously, we had those Gen 1 Nerf motors, which you saw way back in my original Nerf motor mod guide, ranging right the way through from the fairly appalling to the actually pretty decent. And what has happened since then is that a number of manufacturers have got in on the act and started making their own motors. Uh, credit must go to uh, Ryan from MTB for being one of the first people to realise that actually a Nerf specific motor is far more sensible than picking up other people's leftovers on the open market and trying to use those. Um, so obviously uh, MTB were first to market with their own Nerf motor range and uh, their motors still retain a pretty big market share and there are certain things like the Rhino that have become absolutely ubiquitous. So uh, well done to them. And also um, a number of other people have come into the market this year and notably the Chinese have got in on the motor selling game for Nerf um, and they really started with these 132 motors um, and this is an artifact one which I tested a while ago and uh, you'll notice that um, it's lost a tag because some of them aren't amazing quality. Um, but the artifact ones were one of the first ones that I saw. Uh, there's also the black rice motors which again are another Chinese motor that I have in a, a test blaster at the moment and you can see that these have a very long shaft and uh, a lot of those I think were designed for tooth wheels which is another thing that's uh, not so useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to look through all of these. Obviously the uh, Fang motor from Flame Blast, lots of you have seen those, there have been lots of reviews. Um, the original Titan Hyperion which came out uh, just before the Fang and then we have the two new motors from Titan. Uh, we have the new blue Titan Hyperions and the Titan Hyperion X. I think the key question is what is the advantage of a 132 motor? So what I've got here is I've got a 130 and a 180. This is a uh, 3240, the original blades um, that kind of kick-started motor replacement in Nerf. Now if you look, I'll use the fangs as an example. So that is quite a little bit of a height difference there between the two, especially if you include the tags. So there's already a uh, fair old bit of difference um, between the lengths. Now if we put a 130 up next to it, again, not quite such a big jump. Now the advantage about 132s is that they have an armature of almost identical size to a 180 in them. So what we basically got is you imagine shoehorning a big block into a very small sedan car if you're an American, or if you're in this country sticking a Cosworth turbo or a Hayabusa engine into a smart car, it's pretty much what you're doing. You're taking the smallest possible package and putting the largest possible rotor and internals into it. And obviously this does have some implications for heat. Um, but um, we haven't seen any widespread heat failures with these and the 132 can does give more space over the 130 can and you can generate more power from it but it doesn't go quite as big as a 180 can so there's less space in the top for the brush pack because it's basically squashed down so that is why a 132 is useful now there are several groups of 132s we have 2S and 3S 132s so in the 2S pile there's the original Hyperion's and the Hyperion Blue and uh, then the 3S motors, uh, the Artifact is really a 2S motor, it's too hot um, and then in the 3S pile we have the, tit the Titan Hyperion X and the Fang. So the advantage about going 3S versus 2S in these motors is that you can get uh, slightly more torque because you've got more energy going in and you also get a lower consumption of current because you have um, more voltage. A V equals IR and um, you can only get out what you put in and obviously um, a higher voltage will reduce your current consumption. So although the 2S motors have big advantages in terms of the battery packs available for them, they're much smaller, slimmer, um, they're not as thick, which is the useful thing when you've got a long, thin AA battery tray, where you have those AA battery trays where there's four, like that, two cells and two cells, um, you can get a bigger 2S pack in there in terms of size um, and capacity than you can 3S without necessarily needing to step out of the shell and have an extender. Uh, so there are advantages to those. You must be aware that obviously a 2S motor to produce the same power as an equivalent 3S motor will consume more current um, because the voltage is lower. So just bear that in mind and don't expect these to um, run off little tiny 500 mAh or, or even 800 mAh packs. Some of these are packing 20 to 30 um, at least amps each. Um, and the fangs are quite current hungry but they're producing huge torque. Uh, these are actually producing far more torque than this. If you look at the data sheet which I'll link in the description box, some of these motors are producing huge torques for their size. Now I don't have figures for all of these 
Um, but I've got to thank the uh, people who hooked me up with those. So I've got to thank uh, Troy from Tactical Foam for hooking me up with Monkey Mods and the Titan Hyperions. Um, and I've got to thank Michelle for the, uh, from Foam Blast for the fangs. And um, I did try a set, I've had a set in one of my Game Blasters this week, um, and they're quite good. Now, the key thing about 132s, you do need to cut the shell. Anybody who says you don't need to cut the shell is talking cock. Um, it's extremely obvious why, although they are about three to four millimeter longer in the can than a 130, and you would expect possibly the can to fit, there's the tags. Now anybody who's wiring with really, really appalling wire may be able to shoehorn a pair of these in with the tags bent flat against the can. But as we know, that's a very bad idea because you can actually short circuit the tag against the can. So if you've got any brains whatsoever, you will still cut holes for these. You can get a variety of low profile covers. The advantage is that you've got roughly half the cover required. So instead of needing a bigger cover for a 180 right out here, you can go down half the size again. So if you want a slimmer cover, 180s, um, than 180s, then 132s may be for you. So there are the 132 motors, and uh, you can expect some test figures for these. I've already done the artifacts, uh, those are up on um, the Britnev site, and um, I'll get the Titans and the Titan 1s, Titan 2s, Hyperion Xs, and I've also got the Black Rice motors to test. I'm trying to get those sorted. I've got to give a shout out to all the people in the community who've sent darts for that and uh, Franksy the Nerf Hippie for another box of Elites. So I now have all the darts that I need to run all these tests. All of the tests will be done with stock wheels, um, and then as soon as I figure out a way of doing it, I'm going to do a test with the modded wheels, but I've got to test the modded wheels on their own against my standard 3240 benchmark. So it may be a while before you see the high crush results for all of these, um, but a good motor should produce a good result, and what you're looking at on these is not necessarily the peak. They're all going to produce around 115 feet per, uh, feet per second peak, what you're looking for is consistency. If it's every shot 115 feet per second, plenty of torque. If it's up and down quite a lot, less torque. So that's what you want to watch out for in the test.